All right, so a couple things. Number one, the pressure cooker. What we're going to use this for is to cook this much faster than we could do uh, conventionally. So if we just had this in a brazier and we wrapped it up in foil or something, threw it in the oven, and then let it go, it, this particular cut of meat would probably take about close to two hours to be super tender. However, with a pressure cooker at a very low heat, we can seal this thing in. We have a rubber ring here. We have all these different valves and things, and I'll explain how they work in a second. We put this down, and we're going to lock it in place. As we do that, pressure is going to build inside the unit. There's a red safety peg here. See the red safety peg? Right there. Um, that's going to push up in top, and it's going to lock. At that point, we have to control the heat while we're cooking with this thing and make sure that we don't have it too high or we would scorch on the bottom. One way to protect against that is we have these baskets that come with these, uh, these sets. You can put the basket in and then put your sauce in and your other ingredients inside. I always recommend not searing in this if you're going to use it for braising. Um, put the sear in another pan so you don't melt these handles and things. But why does the pressure cooker, why does it do it faster? Well, what's that do for it? What does Impressive. You're right, you're right. It keeps all the steam in. 212, right? What, what temp does water boil? 212. Normally, under regular environmental um, settings, like where we are now at ocean level, um, it takes 212 degrees for water to start boiling. If I ran to the top of Mount Everest, there's less atmospheric pressure on my head, which means that water boils at a much lower temperature, like say 140. If I go down to the bottom of Death Valley and I try to boil water, it may take up to 220 degrees to boil because of all the weight that's pushing the water down, keeping the bubbles from being able to physically uh, go up and uh, out into the atmosphere. If I was able to somehow boil water on the lowest ocean trench, in the bottom of the ocean, if I could somehow boil water in a pot there, then that kind of pressure would probably require hundreds and hundreds of degrees more uh, pressure in order to boil it. In this case, because we're creating this lid, we're going to push down artificial pressure on top of the, the liquid inside, and it's not going to be able to boil. It's, only going, it's going to go all the way up to 240 degrees, possibly. We keep this one about the way we monitor it, it'll stay around 230, but these can potentially go to 240 degrees, which is superheated, crazy pressure that allows this thing to mix and to, to braise faster, reaching gelatinization temperatures much quicker, you know, the 180 to 210, than if you were boiling it. Because if you're boiling or simmering, boiling is at 212. So it takes a very long time to try to get to that equilibrium. Here we're way above that, and so it's, it's faster. The next thing I would say about this is what, what you may not understand and realize is inside it's not boiling. Even when it's at full pressure, the pressure keeps the water from boiling. So it's actually just holding together. That's why you can make things like clear stocks in these. You can make a clear stock in 30 minutes in this thing that is crystal clear, tastes as strong as any stock, but it never, it never boiled. So the flavor is just infused naturally. Um, anyway, we're at full pressure now. The way to monitor this I'm sorry, we're, we're locked, but we're not at full pressure. The way to monitor this is, this is the safety valve. What it's going to do is start rattling. When it starts rattling, because pressure is building, it releases a little bit of pressure to keep this safe. Um, you want it to sound like a train going up the track. You want to hear a ch -ch 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 -ch. And once in a while, you want to hear a where it's blowing out steam. But you don't want it going constantly screaming like that. That's too high. So you just want it chugging right on the edge there, okay? Like think of a train climbing a mountain. It should be chugging, chugging, and once in a while blowing out steam, but not screaming the whole way. Um, that's how you monitor this. That's how you take care of it. You gotta make sure it's doing that or else you may not be a full pressure inside. So while this builds pressure, it's gonna start doing that. Um, there are backups to this. This thing, if it gets plugged or something, or if the pressure gets too high, this is chewed off. If that gets plugged and isn't able to shoot off, then there's a little tiny, uh, bullet in there that's going to shoot out. It's like a bead, and it shoots out. You don't want to be looking at it when it would do that, because it would shoot out. It could go right into the stainless steel. Back in the day, now, how, how old are these, by the way? 1600s. We've had pressure cookers since the 1600s. <laughs> really crazy, right? But back then, they didn't have locking technology like this. They had chains. They would chain them down, they'd lock them with a, a, a lock, and the chef would walk around with the key around his neck so the homies wouldn't come up and open it and kill everybody in the kitchen. You know what I mean? Kaboom. Um, so you understand, these can be dangerous, but if all the safety devices are in, intact, then you should be relatively okay, and if you're monitoring the heat. Any questions there? No questions? I have a little uh, 
side trivia to tell you then. Um, with the stuff we were talking about with the pressure, there's this thing, have you ever heard of ice seven? Ice seven is this, this scientific phenomenon where on other planets where they have seven times the ocean that we do on Earth, and you, it, you can swim into that ocean, and at one point where it's water, 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 eventually animals that could live there or whatever would hit a wall. Even though they're in water, they would hit a wall. It would be as hard as ice, but it's water. It's not cold at all. And the reason it would do that is because the water's compressed so tight from the water pressure above it that it would be rock hard. You wouldn't be able to swim through it. It's called ice seven. Isn't that cool? Completely unrelated, but somehow it is. If you took a cup of ice seven and put it in a room, it would blow up like a nuclear bomb. If you put it in our atmosphere. Isn't that crazy? The expansion. Yeah, isn't it cool? Like the more you know. Um, this is what we want to hear. That's okay. Now if it starts going nuts, then we turn it down a little and monitor it. But you need to hear this. If you don't hear this, then you're not at, at enough pressure. That's how you take care of it. That's how you monitor it. Any questions? Okay. Later on, when we turn this thing off, there's a couple ways to power it down. One way is you can take the whole thing over to the sink and run cold water on it. I don't like to do that because it makes a lot of the parts start rattling off because of the, the real big shock. You can break the handles and stuff. Well, the other way is to turn it off and let it just calm down naturally. It takes a while. And the other way, if you don't mind the boiling, if you have something cloudy, it doesn't matter if it's clear or not, then you take a, a towel, fold it up, and you grab that knob and just let the steam spray out. It'll also let you smell it, too. Yeah, it's kind of fun to do, but it, it'll immediately boil inside if you do that. So just be aware. Okay? Any last? No more questions, right? Good? All right. We'll check back on this later. That's how I pulled it off. And, um...